Hello, fans, and welcome to VMIKeydets.com. Brad Salois here with head baseball coach Jonathan Hadra to discuss the club's infield. And, Coach, you've had some turnover on your ball club this year. Tell us a little bit about who you're taking a look at on the left side of the infield at third and short. Well, we have a couple options uh, between some older guys. David Geary is one. He had a lot of time there last year as our primary third baseman. Uh, but the other guy is Thomas Stallings, who's kind of played everywhere uh, in his time uh, at VMI. He's played some third, played some second. He's been over at first base a little bit. Um, but Thomas is a right-handed hitter and David is a left-handed hitter. So depending on the matchup on the mound, uh, we, you know, we can play the, to the matchup game with those two guys. All right. And what about over at shortstop? Uh, shortstop right now, you know, we have a couple options. A uh, couple older guys. Jordan Tarsovich is a guy that can go over there and play some shortstop. Drew Bryan is a guy that uh, he played shortstop as a freshman for us. Um, but the other guy is a young guy that's really playing well is Jacob Jay. Um, and he's definitely going to get some time there. Um, J.J. is a left-handed hitter from Winchester area. I um, mean, he's, he's looking really, really good right now. All right, over at first base, you lost your starter, Cam Walter, to graduation. Tell us a little bit about the situation at that position. Well, again, it, you know, we have some options there. Tyler Tharp is a guy, uh, didn't have a ton of at-bats last year for us as a freshman, but he came into this sophomore year uh, about 15, 20 pounds heavier, had a great fall offensively for us. Um, he's definitely an option. Colin Fleischer is a freshman from Thomas Dale. Um, that's swinging the bat really well right now. You know, but the other thing, too, is, is David Geary or Thomas, one of those two can also go over and play first base. All right, we've talked about David Geary and Thomas Stallings a little bit. Uh, certainly two characters, as anyone close to the ball club knows. Tell us a little bit about the, uh, the levity that they can help bring to the ball club. Well, they, the best thing about those two guys is they bring the energy every day. Uh, they keep it loose. You know, this is a game. It's college. We're all out here having fun. Um, and those guys, uh, they, they both have a ton of experience. They understand the ups and downs of the entire year. And uh, when things are maybe slowing down or, or somebody's struggling, they're there to pick guys up. Um, and they, they just bring the energy every day. Yeah. All right, one position left to take a look at. You mentioned Jordan Tarsovich, your returning starting second baseman. Who else are you looking at at that position? Well, it's similar uh, to the options at shortstop, uh, because all of those guys can easily go over and play second base. Um, but Tars is, is obviously the returner. Um, he's going to be over there a lot. Um, the other guy I haven't talked about is Reed Bryant. He's a freshman left-handed hitter from uh, the Lynchburg area. Um, and he's just a baseball guy. He's just a guy that's in the right place at the right time. Um, it doesn't speed up on him. And, and he just, he, I mean, he, it's, he's really done a nice job for us. So I've got confidence in all of those guys, whether it's J.J. over there, Tars, uh, Drew Bryan, or Reed. Coach, let's talk about the outfield. Certainly the conversation has to begin with Brandon Angus. First off, how is his health after the offseason wrist surgery? And secondly, what are your expectations and projections for him this year? Well, first off, Brandon, the health of Brandon, he's, he's healthy. Uh, he did have surgery this past summer on his hand, um, and he's, he's good to go. I mean, he's swaying the bat right now great. His bat speed looks outstanding. He's got a ton of strength, um, and he's been practicing with us since right after Christmas. So his health is not going to be an issue. Um, as far as our expectation level for Brandon, we just expect him to do, just be Brandon, just stay within himself. Uh, he did that last year, and uh, he had an all-conference season. There's no reason to think that he can't do that again um, in the Southern Conference. I mean, he, he's a, an extremely good defender, uh, whether it's in center field or whether it's in right field. He's a plus runner. He had st 27 stolen bases last year for us. You know, and he hit right around 330. So. Uh, we, we think he can definitely do that again. All right. Alongside Brandon, you've got several returners, and I know a guy that's moving uh, from the infield to the outfield. Yeah, uh, that's Ray Lopez, uh, who's a redshirt sophomore for us. Um, Ray is, a, is a, an exceptional athlete, uh, which is why we you know, felt that he could take, uh, take the move to, to left field or, out, or, or center field uh, quite easily. And uh, from a defensive standpoint, he looks outstanding. Uh, right now. Um, offensively, he's a guy that creates offense with his athleticism. Um, he can run, he can handle the bat, he's extremely aggressive on the bases, um, and he's a guy that we like to have in the lineup because he creates pressure for the defense. 
Coach, if you put Lopez in left and Angus in either center or right, who takes the third starting outfield position? Well, well we have some options, uh, depending on the matchup, depending on who's swinging the bat well. Um, Will Malvin is a guy that, that is a plus defender in center field. He's a guy that's going to hit at the top of the lineup or the bottom of the lineup. Um, he can handle the bat, create pressure. Um, but then we have a couple other guys between Will Connerly and B.J. Dudek who both have a ton of strength in their bat. Um, they might not run as well as Ray or Brandon or Will, but they, uh, they definitely bring a different dynamic to the, to the lineup for sure. In outfield, you've got a lot of uh, athletes, I noticed, between Angus Lopez, Malbin, guys who can really run. Do you expect the stolen base to be an increased part of your game this year? Well, I, I, we want it to be part of our offense. Uh, whether we increase it or not, um, you know, we haven't really talked a lot about that. But we just talk more about creating pressure on the defense. Um, and if it happens to we steal more bags than we did last year, then, then so be it. But um, it's just going to be something. We're going to be aggressive. Um, we want to create pressure and, and make that part of our offense. We've talked about it several times. It all starts with Matt Wynn behind the plate and that strength up the middle. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we feel great with Matty back there. Um, you know, he's coming off of a fall where, from an offensive standpoint, he looks really, really good. He's very strong. Um, you know, but, but more importantly, as, as a catcher, you want somebody that can uh, guide the pitching staff, uh, get the tough pitches, um, have a rapport with the pitching staff, control the running game. Those are all things that Matty has. Um, and, and we're really, really excited about the season that he's going to have for us. All right, obviously you don't want to wear him out too much, so you got to have a backup catcher back there. Tell us a little bit about some of the options in that situation. We have a couple different options. Uh, we recently actually just moved Will Connerly back there. Uh, we did, made that move a couple weeks ago. Um, he's doing well, and he's just kind of getting back into the groove of things back there after being in the outfield uh, this fall. You know, the other guy, too, that I'm excited about is Peyton Maddox um, from Amherst. He's a freshman. Uh, does a really good job receiving. Um, guy, he's a very accurate thrower. Um, and, and he's a guy that he's just, you know, he's just, he's learning back there, but he's got a great one to learn from in Matt. This year it'll all start with the leading returning upperclassman, Andrew Woods. Tell us a little bit about what makes him so successful on the mound. Well, Woods is successful on the mound because of the way he goes about his business when he's not on the mound. Uh, he prepares outstanding. Um, he's a really good example for the young guys. He always has a plan, whether it's in practice or going into a start. Um, he works very well with Coach Beasley and Matt Wynn, um, you know, talking about how he wants to attack a lineup. Um, he's a talented young man. There's no doubt about that. Um, but what separates him is just the way he prepares and the way he goes about his business. He does an outstanding job. Behind Woodsy, there's been a lot of discussion about Saturday and Sunday. Give us some insight into the number two and number three starter situation. Well, that's a, that's a situation we're still figuring out right now. Uh, we have a few options, uh, whether it's a you know, left-handed pitcher, Austin Heenan, who uh, had a really good freshman year last year, uh, had a really good summer this past year uh, with down in Peninsula. Um, Blaine LeFin is another guy that, that experienced uh, some success last year. Um, you know, but then, then we have other options like Brandon Barbary is a freshman um, from Hilton High School that he had a great fall for us. Um, he shows the ability to throw strikes with multiple pitches. Uh, he has a great feel for his changeup. Um, so he, he's another guy that we have some options with. Um, so, you know, we, we feel confident with wh whoever, you know, kind of figures it out for Saturday or Sunday, we, we're going to have a lot of confidence in him. All right. In the bullpen, you return a couple of veterans, in particular the left-hander Jonathan Kelly. Tell me a little bit about how you look at the bullpen at this point in the preseason. Well, you know, the bullpen's going to be, I feel like it's going to be a strength of ours. We might be a little young in the bullpen, uh, but having J.K. back, is really, really good. We're excited about him. Um, he, he had a really good year last year for us, and we're expecting to him, for him to have the same year um, or something comparable to it. You know, but the other thing is we have a couple freshmen in there with, between Eric Bird, Jared Silva, um, 
you know, they're, they're guys that are they're going to throw this year for us. Um, they're guys that can throw multiple pitches for strikes, um, and they compete. And that's what you want out of the bullpen is guys that are going to come in, pound the strike zone, field their position, and just flat out compete. And we have a lot of confidence in those guys to do that. Um, you know, some of the other guys that we have in there, Micah Gorman threw the ball really, really well the other day. Um, and Mike is a guy that can, he can either fill the role as a starter, he can fill the role as a long relief guy. He, he's, you know, anywhere from 84 to 86 with just three pitches for strikes and, and he's athletic and can field his position. Um, you know, Ryan Bennett's another guy that's very similar to that. Um, TJ Lighton, you know, TJ missed a year last year uh, because of Tommy John, but once TJ makes it back and he's, he's very, very close, um, we're going to be re really excited about TJ because he is just a strike thrower. And um, he had a really, really good uh, redshirt freshman year a couple years ago. And, uh, you know, if he just get once he gets back healthy, we're, we're going to be in good shape. We'll definitely have some options. Coach, we look forward to seeing it. Good luck this year. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Brad. Appreciate it.